preaching and to spread the word. Almost every church I go, I mean, when I talk of deeper life, it's like um, they have this project and this project, but not enough finance to carry it out. Have you ever had something like that before? I said, have you heard? You know, this um, program at Abuja, we, you know, they just, uh, things, many things that happened. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the women that had been looking for an important uh, government uh, position uh, came around and said, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this. And uh, they, they have not stricken my name away from there. And now that you are here, I even wanted to come to Lagos and see you. I said, don't worry about that in the name of Jesus. Go back to that office and get what belongs to you. And she got there. When I got back in June, she said, hey, Pastor, I got uh, that uh, position. And uh, the pastor told me that, uh, you know, somebody just, uh, one of the new converts, not even now an old, old convert, they're saying that because they planted more than 86 churches with the one program that we had all over, all over FCT. One church here, church here, church here. And then they wanted to build uh, one of the new churches they planted. And somebody, one of the new converts gave 10 million naira just to get that done. Think about that. That the Lord is saying, when the Holy Spirit comes and this outpouring comes upon us, finance will not be a problem anymore. Because everything belongs to God. Whether it's a personal need or a family need or a church need, the Lord will supply everything. And then it says in verse 27, And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He'll be in the midst of this church. And that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. And my people shall never be put to shame. You'll never be ashamed. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many? Every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When that outpouring comes and that Holy Ghost comes upon us, when this latter rain we're talking about, when God opens the heavens and he pours the latter rain upon the people of God, this is what he says. He says, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Well, cast out devils. I said, well, cast out devils. Whatever those devils are, when the power of the Holy Ghost comes upon the members of the church and the ministers in the church, they will not be riding over us. We'll be having the victory over them in Jesus' name. And they shall speak with new tongues. New tongues. A change of mind, you remember? A change of meditation, you remember? And a change of mouth. New tongues will now come. It says they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. What will happen? And they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand side of God. And then it says, And they went forth and preached where? Everywhere. And the Lord doing what? Walking with them and confirming the word was signs following. What's the last word there? Before I close, I'm going to show you one little thing. And then you're going to reason with yourself and find out why this little thing. We're going to look at the end of Matthew. The end of Matthew. That is uh, the very last chapter there. End of Matthew. What's the last word? Amen. That means Matthew, when he wrote, he came to a conclusion. He's written about the life of Jesus. And he has written about the ministry of Jesus. And as he concluded everything, there is an amen. Look at the end of Mark. End of Mark. We just came from there. What's the last word there? End of Mark. Amen. Let's go to Luke. Luke. The end of Luke. Uh, we're looking at chapter 24. And we're looking at the last word there. There is an amen. And now we're looking at uh, John. As we look at John, we're looking at the last verse and the last word. Again, 
Now, Acts of the Apostles, the last chapter. Acts of the Apostles, the last chapter. You see that? I said you see that? The amen, is it there? Why not? Is the history of the church, the acts of the apostles, actually the acts of the Holy Ghost, and it continues. There's no conclusion. It's not ended yet. That means that the church is still to write the next chapter. There's no conclusion. All the others, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ as an amen, that finalizes it. It's not coming back physically to do anything. But now the church at work, the church moving out. When that Holy Ghost comes and it is not sealed, it's not concluded, we are the people to bring the conclusion in these last days. That's why you have that space there and that amen is not there, that conclusion is not there because we can still move on. And the things they did, we can do, and we're going to do. If you will allow the Spirit of God to come down from on high and be poured out upon you, and the power comes, will go to all places in this nation, and beyond this nation, will preach the word. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord, and really open our hearts before the Lord. You see, the promise of the latter rain, the preparation for the latter rain, now the purpose of the latter rain. Let's talk to the Lord and say, Lord, we're ready. We're ready. You did it for others. You can do it for us. We're going to spend quality time to pray. Quality time to pray. There's no use uh, waving your hand and trying to stop the prayer. We're going to take time and we're going to pray. Open yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Use people like you in days gone by. Use people like me in days gone by. And it can use you, it can use me yet more, more than ever before. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So the promise he has given that he'll pour the spirit upon us. See the promise he has given that he'll send the latter rain and see the reason why, see the purpose why he has sent the latter rain that he'll restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, that we'll be able to do exploits for the Lord, rich places and good places we've never gone. Have the power, have the anointing, have the unction of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. And do things we've never done, go places we've never gone, say things we've never said, speak in tongues we've never spoken. That's his problem. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.